Kelsey Brennan Wessels for ESA Web TV, and I'm here today with Suzanne Mecklenburg, who is the mission manager for the Sentinel 3 mission. And behind us is a Sentinel 3B satellite. Now, Sentinel 3A has already been in orbit for two years now, am yes, I correct? Yes, yes, almost, yeah. Okay, and you're in charge of the applications, of getting the data to the users, and you, you're very familiar with the applications of the yeah. Sentinel 3 mission. Now, I understand there's so many instruments on these satellites, they look at things, oceans, land. What are some of the applications you've seen, something in particular that you found very important? Yeah. Well, Sentinel 3A has been uh, in, in orbit for almost two years. So, um, but the first um, months and um, years maybe are also spent in a little bit of looking at the data quality. Uh, but you know, now we are seeing actually first applications coming out, and that's very exciting. And uh, one of um, the new features on Sentinel 3A is, for example, that the altimeter instrument is 100% uh, operating in SAR mode, so synthetic aperture radar mode, and that's very new. Um, that's not been done before actually, and it's built on the experience of Cryosat, who also has been running in this particular mode. Um, out of this comes um, a variety of uh, different applications, and a particular one over land, where we can actually measure much, be much better now the inland waters, um, because the uh, SAR mode is actually much more precise, much less noisy, and most of all, it has a much better spatial resolution along the track. And that really helps when you're sort of flying about um, a river, for example, which is not very wide. Um, so traditional or common altimeters before um, had um, basically a problem to to measure these differences from going to a normal topography down to a riverbed, for example. But with the SAR mode now, we can actually pick these signals up much better because we're also operating it in a particular mode where we uh, introduce a digital elevation model. And this digital elevation model helps the altimeter to anticipate what's going to happen. Uh, and that basically makes then the measurement over the inland waters much more precise. Okay, so you're looking at the height of the inland water, yes. but we're not only looking at height, you're also looking at color in some cases with a different instrument. Yes, but that's with a different uh, instrument, that's with the uh, ocean and land color instrument, OLCHI, uh, and there we can actually pick up um, the um, quality of the water. So we're basically measuring something like chlorophyll A or uh, cyanobacteria in the waters, and that gives us some uh, indication about the quality of the water. Um, that has already been done as an operational service uh, in a company in Africa, in South Africa, where they're looking at inland waters, so lakes and reservoirs, uh, and they put that as an online service, so people can actually go to that online service and, and see um, what the quality of the lake is to which they might like to go over the weekend and go for a swim. Um, and that's one of the applications, sort of recreational, but also you know for fisheries to know uh, what is the quality of the way water and what effect might it actually have on fisheries. So it's quite exciting actually that you can with different um, instruments look at uh, the same um, inland water and, and have different features that you can pick up there. And see different things, absolutely. Yeah. Also this past summer there was a drought in southern Europe. We saw a lot of images coming from Sentinel-3 showing fires. Is this part of its uh, its repertoire? Yes, it is actually. Um, for this one we use the, the third instrument on Sentinel-3, uh, uh, the um, SLSTR. Uh, so the sea and land uh, surface temperature radiometer. Uh, we are at the moment uh, developing a product, uh, the fire radiative power product, uh, which um, is of great interest to, for example, the Copernicus Atmosphere Service. And this summer we had a chance already to look at some of the events that were happening, for example, in Portugal um, uh, earlier in the summer, uh, 2017. Um, and again, here we can actually exploit a new feature of um, the radiometer that wasn't actually there in previous um, versions on Envisat, for example, because now we have two very dedicated fire channels. So these fire channels are actually uh, working alongside their nominal channels, but they have a different dynamic range, so they can actually pick up temperatures, brightness temperatures, much higher than their nominal counterpart. And because of that, we can actually pick up very hot pixels by comparison to a slightly more um, smoother ambient uh, area around them. And this contrast then gives us an idea, A, where the fire is, and B, how strong it actually is. And that's called the fire radiative power. And that fire radiative power measured in megawatts gives you an idea about the fuel combustion. It gives you an idea about the smoke that's released into the air. And that is important, for example, also to know for air quality, quite apart from knowing where the fire actually is. Uh, and that has a very hands-on application, obviously, but it's also very important maybe for, for carbon uh, discussions and for the climate in future.
Okay, well, we're looking forward then, of course, to the advancing science and, of course, increasing the, the services coming from Sentinel-3. Suzanne, thank you so much. Thank you. And to our viewers, remember that to learn more about space or about our planet, visit our website, www.esa.int.